What's up guys, Trav White here. Welcome back to the channel. We talk all about the science of style, grooming, and confidence in men so you can go out there and be your most confident self. Okay, so a few months now back, I collaborated with Brock McGough, also known as The Modest Man on YouTube, and I did a Q&A on his channel. Now, the questions that I got were also the most common questions that I get from you guys as well, whether it's in my Facebook community, Mannered Mains, which you guys should come join by the way, or if it's on Instagram, DMs, or wherever it is, these are also the most common questions I get as well. So I thought it would be valuable to put this Q&A on my channel as well. But if you wanna see the original where Brock covers it, go over to The Modest Man, check out his channel. But this is gonna be the version on my channel. So enjoy the Q&A. Oh, yeah. Let's get into the questions. I got them pulled up right here, so I'm just gonna go through each one, do my best to answer them as best as I can, as quickly but concisely as I can. Okay, let's jump to question number one. How do you deal with the awkward stage? Okay, this is the most common question I get. So let's quickly define the awkward stage. So this is when the length of your hair gets too long to style it up, like in a quiff or a pompadour or anything with volume because it's too heavy, it just gets weighed down. But it's too short to tie it back or style it in different long hairstyles because it's not quite long enough. So it's in that in-between phase where you're kind of just like, duh, I look homeless. <laughs> this is also the time when your friends and family start giving you the most pressure to throw in the towel. This is when most guys give up and cut their hair because they're annoyed how long it takes to get through it or people making comments like, dude, you look unprofessional, you look homeless, just cut your hair already. And it sucks if you have curly hair because it takes even longer because curly hair is scrunched up. So if you start from like a buzz cut, you know, you may run into the awkward stage one time while growing your hair out since it's all sort of growing evenly. But if you start from an undercut, it's actually possible that you might run into it twice, right? Once when the top is a little too long to wear it up and you gotta figure out what to do with the top. And then you can run into it again when your sides start getting to that length where you can't put it back, but they're just kind of like, what do you do with the sides? They're too short to do anything with it, but they're too long to style it. So I actually have a video where I go into much more detail on how I got through the awkward stage, but the main thing, and this is really important, start with an end goal in mind, and this will help you mentally and physically. It'll help you mentally because you will have a vision of where you're going, right? So you're not just gonna be sitting in this awkward phase like when is this gonna end? You'll have a visual representation of what you're going towards. So it'll help you mentally. You can see light at the end of the tunnel and it won't feel like a never ending black hole. It'll help you physically because every four to six months you take that picture in with you to your stylist and they will shape your hair as it grows to hit that goal. And they can even out the growth, they can make sure it's on track, they can make sure that you're on path to hit it. So doing this, it's not going to get rid of the awkward stage completely, but it will significantly reduce and make it easier to get through it. For example, I'll pull up a photo real quick of my awkward stage, and then this was my end goal. It was a guy, Renan Pacheco, I really wanted this hairstyle. So I showed my hairstylist and she was able to shape it as it grew, so it was never poofy, it was never uneven, it was never mullety. And in fact, when I show my quote unquote awkward stage image to my subscribers, a lot of people say, well, your awkward stage didn't look awkward at all. Your hair is just whatever, it's blessed or something. And I'm like, well, actually, no, it's because I had it shaped as I grew it. I didn't just let it sort of go. Notice I'm not saying to cut it, I'm saying to shape it. There's a bit of a difference. So the next tip I would say is to use a high hold product on the problem areas. Probably gonna be the sides for most people, but using some gel, some high hold hairspray will help those areas stay in place so you can still look presentable at work or on your day-to-day -day activities. Also, on those days where your hair is just not cooperating, have a favorite beanie or hat on standby just to get through, right? And then finally, patience is going to be key. For my long hair brothers who have made it through the awkward stage, it's kind of like a rite of passage, right? Embrace it, don't fight it. And once you come out the other side, you know, you're gonna feel like a champion. It's a great lesson in committing to something that you really want and delaying the gratification that it takes to get there, which is useful in succeeding at anything in life as well. All right, that was a long answer. Let's move to question two. Can you estimate how long the awkward phase will last if you start with a buzz cut? Okay, so I kind of answered this in the previous answer, but 
It can last anywhere from six to 10 months, depending on your hair growth rate and your curl pattern. If you have curly hair, the awkward stage could last longer than if you had straight or wavy hair. And if you have straight or wavy, it could be on the shorter end. So I would say curly hair could last anywhere from 10 to 12 months, and then straight wavy could last six to eight months. If you're starting from a buzz cut, it could even take you eight to 10 months to even hit the awkward stage, right? Because hair grows about a half an inch per month. On average, some guys faster, some guys slower. The awkward stage usually kicks in around four to five inches in length. That's when it starts to get a little heavy. And then the awkward phase usually ends around seven to eight inches. That's where it sort of gets long enough where you can start doing some cool long hairstyles with it. So again, depending on your rate of growth and your curl pattern, somewhere between six to 10 months, give or take for that awkward stage. To give you an idea, my hair is probably like slightly wavy straight. Mine lasted about six months. All right, next question is, what is the best style to start growing out from? So a buzz cut, an undercut, or a side part? Okay, good question. So this one is kind of preferential, but for me, I would say starting from a comb over was the easiest. Here's a picture, I'll pull it up, actually where I started growing my hair out. And this was sort of like a comb over for me, meaning it was long on top, and it was only a scissor cut blend on the sides rather than a buzz or like a strong undercut. So the reason I prefer this is because it's the easiest way to style it, and you will have the shortest length awkward phase. Meaning, you know, if you start from a buzz cut, you're gonna take long Long time to hit the awkward phase to hit that goal you'll be waiting almost a year to hit it and then around six months of awkwardness and then finally around year two you'll start to be able to experiment with long hairstyles but it probably won't hit your shoulders until like two and a half years in but starting from an undercut you know this will give you a head start on top but you're gonna have to wait a long time for your sides to grow to catch up. This can be a little challenging once your sides hit a really annoying length and your hair's on top and the back is really long and you might start getting like a little mullet look where you gotta even that growth out. So that's why in my opinion, the comb over is sort of the easiest because your sides aren't that behind from the top of your head in terms of length. So it's easier for a stylist to shape it. It's easier to even it out little by little as you grow. And also doing this just minimizes how awkward your hair will look since it's going to be relatively more even just all over. I'm not saying either of those is a bad place to start from. Those are the pros and cons. If you've already started growing your hair from a buzz cut or an undercut, don't start over. Just keep pushing through, you'll get there. But just my preference is starting from like kind of a side part comb over. All right, next question. Is the growing out process different for guys with coiled or kinky hair? Okay, so this is talking about curl pattern for the growing out process. So for guys with coily hair, which is a specific curl pattern on the hair type chart, so we'd probably be looking at like a 3A all the way to a 4C. For the growing out process, you will have to be much more patient. I know, I'm sorry but your hair is scrunched up, so hitting the same visual length as someone with straight hair or wavy hair like me is going to take double the time, even though your hair will be twice as long when you actually hit the visual length because you'll be able to pull it down like way longer and it'll pop back up. So in reality, your hair is going to take twice as long to hit the same length, but this is kind of bittersweet, right? It's bitter because you have to wait longer, but it's so sweet when you hit that length because curly long hair just looks epic. It looks really, really cool. I'll pull up a, a guy who's like my favorite curly long hair inspiration. I wish I had those curls, they're super cool. But hair maintenance is definitely going to be different if you have type three or four hair in terms of shampooing, conditioning, styling. But that's a different question. This question was only about the growing out process. So I'll just leave it at that. Okay, next question is, is long hair good for guys without facial hair? Yeah, so there's a common cliche that growing your hair out requires a beard, especially for us quote unquote men who look like women with a beard. <coughs> I get that insult all the time, whatever. Apparently I look feminine. So if you're a guy who just looks like they're wearing eyeliner all the time, when they're actually not, I don't, I promise. Then I would say, yeah, a beard can help you look you know, just more masculine, more distinguished, more wise, but growing a beard is not a prerequisite for growing your hair, right? You can have long hair and a clean shaven face. In fact, on some men, it looks better. Okay, let's move on to the next question here. Does long hair work better for certain face shapes or body types? Yeah, you know, there's an entire field of scientists who study the science of attractiveness and symmetrical proportions and average faces versus unaveraged faces. Like there's a whole beauty scientific study, right? For example, plastic surgeons learn about 
the most flattering, attractive face shapes when doing cosmetic surgery on patients. You know, I've read a little bit about that. I know, for example, like the oval face shape is considered the most flattering in terms of average proportions and symmetry. And the trapezoid body type is how all store mannequins are designed. So the clothes look flattering in stores and you see male runway models who all have trapezoid body types. But honestly, like for men, I think having a more sort of square face shape can show off some of the chiseled jaw lines. It can show off just a lot of contour in the cheekbones and things like that. And actually a beard can help contour your face. So that's one plus of growing a beard out too. But for the sake of this video, I'm just gonna say that long hair will work on pretty much all face shapes. What it's going to come down to is how you style it. So for example, if you have a square face, like very chiseled jaw, like basically the width of your eyebrow, your cheekbone and your jaw are all sort of square, then you know, rocking a highball or a man bun was going to look epic on you because it's pulled out of the way of your face and it will like show off all of those cuts and those features. But if you have, let's say an oblong face shape, which is sort of like a square, just longer. So think of like someone with a big forehead, then you might look more attractive wearing it down because if you pull your hair up, it's just going to sort of lengthen the forehead. This is visually going to lengthen it. So just things like that, like how you style it is going to be different based on the shape you have. But I think that any face shape can have long hair. It's just gonna come down to styling. So let's move on to the next question here. If you have thin hair, should you still grow it out? Okay, so I wanna make a really quick distinction here. Thin hair is referring to overall density of your hair, right? Like follicles per square inch. We're not talking about the circumference of one single strand. That is hair texture. That refers to fine, medium, or coarse texture. I have a video on thin hair versus fine hair you can watch. So if you have thin density hair, should you still grow your hair out? So I would say this is totally up to you, but growing out thin hair will amplify the thinness a little bit more. But what I would say is that there is a level of confidence that says like, yeah, I got thin hair and I'm still rocking long hair. So I actually have a whole other video that I'll link to in the description about men with receding hairlines who have long hair. And I think you would find a lot of inspiration from that, but just some really fast examples. I know Jerome Flynn, the guy who played Braun in Game of Thrones has long, thin hair. Christopher Heavesu, who played Tormund Giantsbane in the same show, has long and thin hair. David Dawson, who played King Alfred in The Last Kingdom, long and thin hair. There's a lot of others, even Hulk Hogan, wasn't it? He was rocking like a skullet. He had like male pattern baldness, but hair back and down. You can even look at George Carlin, the comedian who had like a ponytail from the back. So it is totally up to you, but I would say you shouldn't let it discourage you from at least trying it. But if you don't like it, you know, you can always cut it. Okay, let's jump to the next question. And this one is, is it bad if you find hair on the ground every time you take a shower? Okay, so this is also a very, very, very common question that I've answered in several videos of mine. I'll link to, of course, in the description again. But the short answer is no, it's not bad. It's totally normal. So our hair grows through a growth cycle. It's three stages. You have the antigen phase, the catagen phase, and the telogen phase. So antigen phase is the active growth phase. It lasts from two to eight years. Catagen is when blood flow to the follicle starts to slow down. It can last anywhere from six to eight weeks. And then telogen is when blood flow stops and that hair sheds. And, the, and then eventually the antigen phase kicks in again. So the telogen phase can last anywhere from one to two months, but telogen shedding is a natural part of the hair growth cycle. So what I would pay attention to is how much you're shedding and if it's gradually speeding up due to things like stress or nutrient deficiency or genetic hair loss. You'll also look to see if you're receding at your temples or on the crown of your head because that could be a sign of male pattern baldness which is a genetic trait. If the density of your hair is starting to change from something like thick density to thin density, then yeah, I mean, start to consult a doctor, but we shed 100 to 200 hairs per day naturally. So seeing some on the ground after the shower or on your hairbrush after brushing is totally normal. And I actually have a video on how much hair I shed in a day from showering and brushing. You can watch it in the description if that will help ease your mind. Okay, jumping on to the next question. And that is, what if you start getting a flaky scalp while growing your hair out? Okay, so this is important to make another distinction here because flakes can be caused by multiple things. You can have flakes from a dry scalp, which could be a result of too harsh of shampoo or from shampooing too 
often or both of those things combined, which is most likely the case for a lot of guys who are growing their hair out for the first time, don't realize how harsh their shampoo is or how often they're shampooing it. It could also be from dry air or it could be from an allergy from the fragrance in your shampoo or from a shampoo ingredient. Or you could have dandruff from seborrheic dermatitis, which is a skin condition that is an imbalance of bacteria on your scalp. And that's what dandruff shampoo fights against, things like head and shoulders or Selsun Blue or Nizerol. So dry scalp flakes is not the same thing as dandruff. And this is important because if you have dry scalp and you see flaking, you don't wanna go out and buy head and shoulders right away and say, ah, I have dandruff, because you probably just have a dry scalp. So the solution is much simpler for you. And the easiest way to tell the difference is that flakes from a dry scalp are dry, obviously, and they're small and they're white. And flakes from seborrheic dermatitis are going to be probably a little larger, a little oilier, and you'll probably have oily hair and scalp rather than dry hair and scalp. And they could be like white or yellow or red. If it is seborrheic dermatitis, you'll have to contact a dermatologist or look at the dandruff fighting shampoos. If it's just dry scalp, then you'll just need to discover what your scalp moisture level is, what your hair type is, and change your shampoo and conditioner. And if you have no idea what your hair type is, I have a free find my hair type PDF that you can download, or just by watching an in-depth video I have on men's hair types, then you can figure out your own hair type. But once you know this, you can buy the best shampoo and conditioner to combat dry scalp. You'll probably just need a gentler shampoo, most likely something's not as harsh, something's not as stripping. Moving on to the next question. I'm gonna try and get through these faster, sorry guys. So, is there any way to bring out your waves and curls without using a curling iron? Okay, that's a good question. Yes, there are. There are things like curling ropes you can buy. Basically, you like wrap your hair around it overnight and then you'll take them out in the morning and you'll have curls for a day. You could wear a braid overnight and take it out the next day. You could use a curl cream after the shower and you sort of do the scrunch method where you scrunch it while you let the curl gel sit in and you apply it sort of damp. You know, I'm not a professional hairstylist and I don't really ever curl my hair, but I do know those are the ones I'm aware of, of like heatless curling methods to curl your hair. Okay, next question. If you have long hair, how can you look professional in an office setting or while wearing a suit? So my favorite go-to professional hairstyle is a middle part with a low ball in the back and just pulling it back. I think it's a great way to look professional. It's fast and it's easy to do. It doesn't require any product. I have an entire video on professional ways to style long hair. Again, link to it in the description. If your hair is not long enough to put it in a bun yet, then I would go for something like a slick back look or something like a comb over. Okay, that was a quick one. Next question. What is your quickest and easiest go-to hairstyle right now. So my quickest, I guess, go-to is just like a simple messy bun. I kind of just throw it up in a messy bun and go about my day. Or I do something like half pony, which I call the Geralt of Rivia, kind of how he wore it in The Witcher. You can see both of those tutorials on my channel. I have tutorials on how to style your hair, six easy ways to style men's long hair video in the description. Okay, next question is, how often do you shower? and how often do you use shampoo? So this is a very common question again. So I shower daily, but I only shampoo every five to seven days. And I only wet my hair when I shampoo. So I don't even wet my hair at all on the other days that I shower. I keep it in a highball and I avoid getting my hair underwater. If you're curious how to keep your hair fresh without wetting it, I have a video on what my process is because I do work out three to four times a week and I do sweat quite a bit, but I have a whole process that I do to keep my hair fresh without having to shampoo it daily. Next question is, what shampoo and conditioner do you recommend? Yeah, this is a tough question to answer because everyone has a different hair type. So again, download my free hair type PDF to discover what yours is. So for example, some men have greasy or oily scalp and need to have a more clarifying shampoo and conditioner. Some men have dry scalp and need a gentle, more moisturizing shampoo and conditioner. So there's no like one size fits all answer. But I will say I do like Beard Brand as like a good option for every hair type because it's gentle, but not so gentle that your hair doesn't feel cleansed. And it's not so strong that it's going to like strip all of your sebum and all of your natural oils and all your hair protein like a sulfate shampoo would. So I'd say like it's a good middle of the road for most men. But again, every four or so weeks, I still do a clarifying wash with a sulfate shampoo just to like hit the reset button, strips off any styling products I've used, anything with silicones in it, any hairsprays or gels. Just a good clarifying wash every four weeks is something that I do do. And in between those clarifying washes, 
days, I opt for the Beard brand or I opt for the Formulate shampoo that is like a personalized custom shampoo that's made for me. They're a company that does custom shampoos. So you can look into them as well. But my favorite scents from Beard brand are the Tea Tree or Temple Smoke. But the correct answer is the best shampoo and conditioner is one that's best for your hair type, not the one that's best for me. Which is not a black and white answer, I know. There's nuance and there's shades of gray and I'm sorry I can't give you a straight answer, but it is the best answer. Next question is, what do you do with your hair when you're sleeping? Yeah, I typically just throw it up on my pillow and I pass out, I don't really do anything. I know guys like their hair gets caught behind their shoulder or it falls in their face while they're sleeping and it can get annoying. Something I'd recommend is a very loose highball and I would use like a scrunchie or something like this, a keychain hair tie right here. This is very non-damaging hair tie. You can also opt for the hair ties for guys from the Long Hairs website. Don't use these black elastic ones. I used to use them forever, but they are pretty damaging. Do you see this? glue part right here. Yeah, it can actually sort of damage your hair if you, especially if you wear your hair too tight. So very loose and a, uh, a non-damaging scrunchie or keychain hair tail like that. And you can just keep your hair out of your face, especially while you're tossing and turning. It's not going to damage or break your hair. Okay, next question is, what do you do with your hair when working out? So yeah, I probably wear it how I would wear it in the shower when I try to keep my hair out of the water is I would wear it in a loose highball and this keeps my ends, the ends of my hair from sticking to my shoulders or my back getting really sweaty. And it's also better than wearing a hat because a hat just smushes your hair down and locks heat in and makes you sweat even more. And it also helps because when I take my hair out, I have volume still and it doesn't get smushed down by a hat or something. So the sweat then only builds up on my scalp and then I can just evaporate it with a blow dryer on the cool setting and then I spray a little dry shampoo on my roots to freshen it up and that way the ends of my hair are like mid shaft down they don't even get wet with sweat and they don't get dirty and that way I can go longer without having to shampoo if your hair is not long enough to put it up in a bun then I would just rock a headband or a hat there's nothing really you can do about it and you'll probably just have to add an extra day of shampooing to your routine throughout the week until you can hit the length that you want all right Finally, let's jump to the last question here. This video has been going on. I'm gonna make this the last one. And that is, how do you deal with long hair haters or friends who make jokes about your hair? I actually made a really fun video about long hair haters with some awesome guys who also have long hair and there are other YouTubers as well. But the short answer is, if it's like legitimate hate, I just ignore it. I don't even pay attention to it. But if it's friends and family, then I'll be like, well, you know what? I'm actually growing my hair out to donate it to kids who aren't able to grow it out, which I am doing that. Don't say that and not do it. You should definitely donate your hair if you're gonna say it. But I do want to donate my hair at some point. And that usually gets them to be like, oh, that's cool, okay. And then another thing to realize is that if somebody is hating on you or judging you for how you wear your hair, it's usually kind of a reflection of their own insecurities. And it really has nothing to do with you personally. So so don't take it seriously, don't take it too personally. I know exactly who I am and I don't wanna let others dictate how I should live my life because then whoever had an opinion about me, then I would just have to cater to that opinion. All right guys, those were all the questions that you guys asked. They're the most popular questions I get all the time. I hope you enjoyed the video. Let me know down in the comments if you have any other questions or if you want me to do another Q&A video like this in the future. I'll see you guys in the next one. Peace.